All right, so as you see, I put the gasket on here. I did not torque or sequence or anything, right? I assembly looped everything the way that I would to finish assembly. I'm hoping to save a little time. What I'm doing right now is just a valve train geometry check. So the heads have been milled, the pistons have a dome to them now. So previously they had the flat tops. What I want to do is I want to verify that there's enough clearance, that I'm not going to have any interference issues. Uh, normally when I do that, I don't put the gasket in. I just bolt the head on uh, lightly uh, without a gasket, and then I'll do my clearancing. Uh, but what I'm going to do to, to do it this time, a feeler gauge, two of the valves. So I have number one on top dead, I believe compression stroke. I put four bolts in the head, just enough to hold it. I'm going to go ahead and put this the rocker arm assembly on there. And I'm not going to actually torque anything. I'm just checking geometry factor here. I'm going to put all these into place, and I'm going to concentrate on these two. And the reason I'm doing that is I'm just checking for clearance, making sure that I have at least 40 thousandths of extra material, and I'm going to use a feeler gauge to check that. It's a lot easier to do this on a motor that has solid lifters, because then I don't have to worry about uh, collapsing the lifters to check the clearance but now I'm going to have to put enough feeler gauge in there to collapse the lifter in order to check. And uh, on top of that, I'm going to check by prying and seeing if I have more room and how much more room. Uh, if I feel uncomfortable with the amount of room I have, I'll grab my dial indicator and verify that I have at least 40 thousandths of clearance. If I obviously have more than that from the, the valve retainer here, if I see it move way beyond that, then I have nothing to worry about and I can just go ahead and uh, continue assembly. So I have the piston top dead, it's on overlapped, I collapse the lifter to verify how much material I, or how much of the lifter is collapsed, I'll calculate the number in a little bit, I'll grab my caliper. So this is the intake valve, I'm just taking a, this is a alignment tool, uh, really doesn't matter what I'm using, but this area here is strong enough that I can push on it and get enough leverage to collapse the spring, and I feel zero things hitting within that amount, and that's easily 100,000. So um, that one I know is good. And that one is also good. So I have way more than enough valve clearance. Uh, there's no way this thing's gonna have an interference issue on that part of it. here is head gaskets. There is a front and a rear, well it doesn't say rear on the rear, but it says front here. Uh, the reason for front um, is because of the cooling system. If you put a head gasket on backwards you will most likely have overheating concerns. You can see it right here. See these two openings? So those go towards the back and the reason for that is pretty simple. It's so that when the antifreeze gets pushed into here it pushes it across the cylinders, and then it comes all the way to the end here. I mean, there's little holes, yeah, so some of it's flowing up into the head, but the majority of it goes all the way to the back, and then it comes to the back of the head, and then comes across the head this way. That way, it can cool it to the maximum. If you just had it go up and like this, and you just had it come straight up here, most likely these back couple of cylinders won't hardly have any cooling flow, and if you don't have the coolant flow going through them, then obviously they're going to get hot. 
So it's to make sure that the coolant comes across all the cylinders and comes across all the combustion chambers in order to properly cool the engine down. Well, since I happen to run out on this motor, I'm going to share this with you guys. This is my top secret formula. I don't know. It's just uh, my, my assembly oil, I guess you could call it. It's what I use uh, on pretty much everything, except for like the bearings and stuff, and anywhere that I can dab a little grease at. But you, you see me put it on this uh, rocker arm assembly. It's a concoction between three items, Lucas oil stabilizer, automatic transmission fluid, and then this Lucas Zinc Plus, TV Zinc Plus. Now, the zinc, I use that obvious, obvious for cushion. I've talked about that in another video or, you know, a little bit earlier with this car. I, I talk about it from time to time. And uh, the zinc thing, it's huge for metal on metal contact areas. The ATF, it's a thinner and a detergent is basically all I'm using it for. And it's because this stuff is so crazy thick. I mean, you're making strings trying to use just that. It's just too thick. Um, so this thins it out. And the detergent factor also helps with cleaning off like the small metal dust that comes from the cylinder wall rings. You know, the rings take it off the cylinder wall, take those little metal high spots off. Um, so this helps keep that from sticking to the rest of the motor. That way when you drain your oil, it actually all comes out. Uh, and then of course, this is super thick and it helps it adhere to everything, but you don't want it so thick, that's why I have the ATF, that you can't do it without making a giant mess. So I mix all three of these together. I start with the ATF because it's the thinnest and it keeps it from sticking to the bottom of the bottle. I can stir it a lot easier that way. So I'll start with that and end with that. And then these two go in the middle. All right, so I don't know if you caught that. I don't know if my video went long enough. Um, but between the three products that I had out, uh, I ended up overfilling it on the last one when I put the automatic transmission fluid in. I literally went all the way up and above the freaking funnel a little bit. Oops. But it's not a big deal. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and try and mix it some. And then uh, put some of it in the motor, which I like to do anyway. I usually end up with about a quarter of a quart worth of that stuff in there, that, that mixture in there. flywheel they go clean through into the crankcase area of the engine so you have to use some kind of a sealer on the threads and uh, if you use something like Loctite you want to use a decent amount I mean a pretty good quantity of it uh, that way it can push out when you thread it in. it'll push out it'll seal against the where the flywheel and the crank meet and then if you put a little bit on the head here as well the flat spot of the head it'll seal on the outside of the flywheel as well 
And by doing so, you're guaranteed not to have any pain. Okay, so we have that chip tooth in the flywheel and either I have to order a new flywheel and wait another week or whatever it takes to get it or I can just go ahead and uh, fix this thing. It is only one tooth that is missing. Show you pictures. That one tooth will not stop it from engaging. However, the tooth next to it shows a sign of a, a little bit of damage Probably because of when it engaged there, it, it had to kind of jump and, and it bound, but it still succeeded in making its round and, and starting the motor. Uh, that was, I just got done calling the customer and he said that he hasn't had a problem with it, but he wants it fixed. So instead of ordering a new flywheel, the first attempt I'm going to make, and he's aware of this, is I'm going to attempt to weld that tooth and then match the tooth weld. So it's basically going to be built up to the other teeth and make it look identical in hopes that I can repair this flywheel. I already have it installed, I don't want to remove it, so I'm going to make an attempt and see if I can fix it. Alright, so what I did here is I went ahead and after I got done grinding it down and making it look like what I thought was good, I took and hit it with the rail can um, just to get a good image of what it's going to look like, if it's even or not, because the grind marks were throwing off my perception as far as uh, whether I thought it was even. I thought it looked like it was kind of even and uh, I kind of saw a couple spots that I thought, oh man, it's way off, you know? And in fact, it's a little off in, in a couple of spots that I thought, but it's a lot more even than I thought it was. Um, and I think it's okay to run the way it is. So I'll get you guys a couple of pictures here. Well, there you have it. A long block with some hardware, uh, all ready to go in the car next video you see if this thing will be going in the car so with that i hope you enjoyed this video please like share subscribe and don't forget the notification bell if you're already subscribed because otherwise youtube won't let you know that you have a new video from me thanks for watching and i will see you on the next episode